Amen. If you have uh, your Bibles again, we're going to be in King James chapter 55. I'm only going to word or uh, read uh, verses 6 through 9 and uh, concentrate on the scriptures 8 through 9. Um, but again, that's Isaiah 55. I will read uh, 6 through 9 and concentrate uh, on verses 8 through 9. I'm going to actually talk a little slower today, but uh, try not to be slower in time. Um, but uh, I want us uh, to digest this. I will forever be a preacher that is more of the retaining than the entertaining um, when it comes to God's word. Um, and so um, and we have Isaiah chapter, chapter 55, but verse 6 says, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts, your thoughts. Blessed to the readers and the doers of the word, you, 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 you may be seated, you may be seated. Today's day is a message for us all to hear, and really for us to think within ourselves, uh, for us to challenge ourselves in our actions, thoughts, and truth of character. Uh, many times we've heard this familiar passage if you were raised in church, um, and, uh, and we, we know about prophet Isaiah, um, and as we understand that this prophet Isaiah was a truly anointed man. In fact, his name means itself salvation of Yahweh, uh, Yahweh of salvation. We say Yahweh, we replace Yahweh with the word God, but Yahweh is even with Israel, his name meant. And so when we read these 66 chapters of this book, you will understand there's a lot of things in it from a prophetic to a coming of Christ. Matter of fact, uh, many of us will show us that in these 66 chapters, you will see warnings of promises punishments of nations. You'll see God's judgment of the world, and then you'll see messages of promises of hope. And you'll see a lot of historic things in just the book of Isaiah. Today, there's a spiritual message that I will deliver using this context of scripture, but I will not break it down as if this was a Bible study. And as always, that's why I encourage us to go back and read this for ourselves. But there's a spiritual, spiritual message in this. And even when we look at chapter 55, it talks about hope and everlasting life. It talks about abundance of life through God's mercy. Well, again, our message will be centered around verses 8 and 9. And it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. When I was consecrating myself and asking God, what should I speak on? God gave me a simple title. And the title is, What If? God. You say, but preacher, that don't even, what if God? Well, one, when I look at this word, what if, I, I said, well, what if God? I said, well, we understand the word, what if. Guess what? Many times we'll say this word, what if, and it can bring on possibilities, whether good or bad. Uh, what if I hit you in your mouth? Oh, well, that might be good or bad because you're going to bust me right back. What if I 
give you a hug. There's possibilities when we see this word, what if. Matter of fact, what if can show an uncertainty in our lives when we're using the word what if through our choices and our actions that we may take place. What if she leaves me or what if he comes back because what we might have done or said when we see this word, what if it can bring an uncertainty. Hang with me for a minute. What if may raise a lot of questions in our lives and the journeys that we do. Because it never makes a decision. It never answers a problem. It never gives a solution. In fact, there's no solid foundation that we can stand on when we have the word, what if? And who wants to be around an if it person? Who wants to go across a bridge that you say, uh, what if it, it won't hold me? I know I've gained some weight a little bit. I, I look at things now when I walk across of it. What if? Because there's an uncertainty. But I'm thankful to the day of the God that we serve that we don't have to say, what if? Amen. But if you take a journey with me for a minute, I want to to challenge our minds if we said, what if God was like man? What if God was like man? See, many times in our journey of our life, we try to put God as if he's equivalent to us. How do I know that? I know that when God tells me something, I try to reason as if I might know better. But what if God was like mine? I promise I'm not going to be here long, but I'm just going to talk a little slow. When we look at ourselves, could we say that we are the image of God? Yes, yes, yes. I know when we read in the beginning, it, it says, and, and we are made in his image. But when we think about it, can we say that we really would want to be truly judged by ourselves and who we are right now if God was like us. What if God was like me? I understand that when we take a moment to look at our thoughts, we might find out that we are thankful that God is not like us. Matter of fact, uh, when you look at Genesis 6 and 5, and this is in the beginning, we understand it says, and God said, I mean, excuse me, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, some would say, well, that was back in Noah's day. That was before the flood. But uh, yes, this was in the beginning. But I want us to understand that some of us are still wicked. Yes, you were still created in the image, and yes, we uh, might come from the lineage of Adam and Eve, and now the, the lineage of, 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 of Noah, but guess what? Man, when he left to his own devices, what if God was like us? Psalms 94, 11 says, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. A man can be high-minded sometimes. Man can be controlling sometimes. Man allows emotions and hurt to make choices for us. Could we imagine if God did the same? We wouldn't be none of us because when he saw what Adam and Eve did, I love it because my spiritual mother said he had to go in the cool of the day because if he would have went in the heat of the day, he would have destroyed everything. Have you ever went somewhere when it was hot? You don't want to do nothing. You're frustrated. But thank God that God is not like us. If God thought like us, can we imagine? He would be quick to anger and slow to mercy as we are. He would judge us without asking as we do sometimes. 
Have you ever saw a meal that was prepared and looked at it and said, I don't want that, but you never tasted it to see how good it was? I'm guilty of that. Uh, you can't put anything in front of me and expect me to eat it. Talk about try it. Mm -mm. But I thank God that God is not like us. God can take something that looked like filthy rags and, and turn it into royalty. God can take yeah. someone that was out in the field raising and sheep and, and turn them into a king. I thank yeah. God that my God is not like us. Yeah. If God was like us, he would hate instead of love us because he is perfect and he know that we are not perfect. Matter of fact, us, we struggle with sometimes knowing that we're imperfect, but still we'll hate on somebody in their imperfectness. I surely thank God that he's not like us. I understand that when he's not like us, we got to give a shot and hallelujah because his thoughts are not like our thoughts. Well, remember the scripture said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, where would we be if God thought like us? But what if God's ways was like our way? What type of God would we serve? Proverbs 14 and 12 says this. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. You mean to tell me if God's ways was like our ways, there would be no salvation? You mean if God's ways was like our ways, then it would never be a beginning but only an end? Well, I sure thank God that God's ways are not like our ways. If God's ways was like our ways, then what would we praise for? If God's ways was like our ways, there would be no grace. We know grace is free. We know it's saved by grace. Everything would come with a cost if God's ways was like our ways. Christ would not have died for us. He would have said, not my will, Lord, and not your will. He said, I, I, I like them, but I love me. I'm not going to die for them. God would be selfish and not selfless. He would not sacrifice himself for us. But I thank God that his ways are not like ours. How do I know that? Because the Bible said, and we say it all the time, for, so God loved the world. This is why we were still full of our sin. For God so loved the world that he gave him his only begotten son. Why? So that we wouldn't perish. God has been the same since the beginning and forever. Christ Amen. has always been. He said, before Abraham was, I am. God, nothing was made without Christ. Christ Amen. didn't have to come down and manifest himself, yes. but thank God. Yes. God's ways is not Amen. like our way. Jesus would have been like, I ain't doing it. Have we ever found ourselves Truly making sacrifices? What sacrifices do we truly make? I'm not shocked when I look around here right now because it goes with this slow speaking message. I woke up with a pain in my side this morning. This is a true tool. And the pain that I was feeling, somebody else would have said I'm not coming to church. But I'm still standing here speaking before the Lord because I understand where my help comes from. I understand who's my healer. And I understand that I must do the will of the Lord. And if I'm willing to sacrifice 
My little sacrifice. Look all the big sacrifices that God will do for me. Well, what do you mean when you talk crazy that time and God said, I, I still love you and I'm going to accept your forgiveness. That time when you probably should have done some things, but you know you didn't do it. God said, that's all right. I, I'm still going to love you. I've done too much wrong to understand that I need God in my life every day. What sacrifices do we truly make? What do we give up for others without a cost to them? It's sad that we live in a world right now that people think that no one truly loves them without something. Matter of fact, we are not living in what I call agape love. We're not living in unconditional love. We're loving in a love of conditions. When you can do for me, and when you can when can and give to me, then I, I I love you. But what do we do when there's no love of condition? I thank God that His ways are not like our ways. When we think and imagine within ourselves. How would the world be if God thought and acted the way he acted? Here, we're understanding that if God thought the way he thought, if God's ways was the ways of ours, then we would have been gone a long time ago. And in fact, in most of our lives, it took us to be in the wrong way to find the right way. But it's because of God's mercy. He's saying, I'm showing you this so you know how to get here. What do you mean, preacher? I'm letting you be a fool until you understand that you can't do nothing without me. God's ways is not our ways. In fact, the scripture reminds us in verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. I thank God because God is true. Well, what do you mean, preacher? Truth is God is not like man that he should lie. When you study your scriptures, we'll read this and find this in Numbers 23 and 19. Well, what do you mean? God said he's going to do it. He's going to do it. I, you asked me to do something three months ago, and, it, and it's been a year. Truth is that Jesus is the way and the life. Amen. The, the truth is that God is slow to anger and quick to mercy. Amen. But we have to do some things. And what do you mean? Yeah. I'm done with the paper. What do you mean? That means that I have to turn from my wicked ways. That means that I have to go to God and acknowledge him. Yeah. That means I have to understand, God, that I'm nothing without you. And any time I think that I might and I need you to humble me. God, I need to understand that I have to continue to press towards the mark because all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And who am I to think that I don't sin? God, I need to understand that I serve someone that's not dealing with time, that's not dealing with man's cycle of function. And because I'm dealing with a God that's more divine, that's more sovereign than I am, I'm going to worship you, Father God, because I'm glad that your thoughts and your ways are not like mine. God, when I'm left to myself, God, I understand the destruction that I can cause. God, when I'm left to myself, I can understand what my idle man, idle mind can bring. God, when I'm stuck with myself, I'm stuck in the old creature nature. And all I can do is destroy things, God. Because when I'm left to my own devices, then I find myself trying to be more than I can. But now we have to understand that my ways need to emulate God. Instead of saying, what if God was like man? We need to say, what if I was more like God? What if I chose God instead of me? What can I do to be saved? I have to understand that when I choose God, then God is going to open the doors of my path. 
But when I walk through my path, I understand that there's going to be some trials and there's going to be some tribulations. But I understand that God is with me and he'll never forsake or leave me. But I have to choose him in this process. I have to choose him in my walk. I have to choose him in my talk. I have to choose him in my journey. I cannot do it without him. Have you ever laid down at night and didn't know what tomorrow was going to bring? You found yourself being caught and trapped up in these worries and concerns that God is saying, why worry? You can give not thought to the day of tomorrow. Tomorrow brings on itself. But if you give me your praise, if you give me your worship, don't you understand? I know every hair on your head. Don't you understand that I got you, but you got to trust me? Where is your faith in me? Don't you understand that my thoughts are not like your thoughts? My ways are not like your ways. As the heavens are high, so am I. So you better start looking toward the hill which come in your help. And your help come from the Lord. All I'm saying is, what if God will make a way and despite what we see with our eyes, and despite what we see even in our hearts, we have to understand that God is a promise keeper. God is a way maker. God is a healer. And so we got to say, not what if, but God, I thank you because you are what is. Yes. And because you what I is, then I know that you are the God I am. And if you are I am, then I am able. I told you I wasn't going to be here long. All, of, all I wanted to say is, what if the challenge on mine? Why? Because our conduct and our character must align with God despite Amen. what's going on around you. I, I, kind of like you, mother. Sometimes I can't understand why we choose us over God. Have you not lived a life to understand it? That you over God don't work. <laughs> but God over you brings promises. Amen. I didn't like what they say. Well, I'm quite sure Jesus didn't like that they nailed him to the cross. <laughs> Why must I do everything? Because maybe the ones that's around you just sheeps and you were designed to be a shepherd. God said the chief is of us should be the most humble. It should be the most noble. It's the one to minister and serve all. But I look around and you want to be something by title. But don't do the work of the title. You want to be lifted up on the donkey. But you acting like the dope. That was the word I was going to say. <laughs> we have to remind ourselves who God is. And sometimes in our life, when we, before we take action and do, we have to say, God, if you were like me, then I never would have been saved. But God, if I can put on your mindset, it'll help me love all those in that true time of need. What if? God. That's it. Short. Short. Probably the shortest in history that I've done here. But we are thankful to God. And, and this is the time that we give the invitation. This is the time that we say, if your heart is just needing prayer, if you're needing God, if you need an accessory, if you're needing us as saints to come together, this is when the door to the church is open. This is when we need to stand together. At the time the doors of the church are open, you might be looking for a church home. The church home is the you sit, we can see we can need you. We 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 want you. I'm not saying need because God supplies the need, but we would want for anyone that desire to be of service. This is when the doors of the church 
is over. We thank you, God, for who you are.